the new St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism, Lesson 12, The Marks and Attributes of the Church. The one true Church established by Christ is the Catholic Church. We know that the Catholic Church is the one true Church established by Christ because it alone has the marks of the true Church. By marks of the Church, we mean certain clear signs by which all men can recognize it as the true Church founded by Jesus. The chief marks of the Church are four. It is one, holy, Catholic, meaning universal, and apostolic. Those are the four marks of the Catholic Church. The Church is one because it's all members, according to the will of God, profess the same faith, have the same sacrifice and sacraments, and are united under one and the same visible head, the Pope. The Catholic Church is holy because it was founded by Jesus, who is all holy, and because it teaches, according to the will of Christ, holy doctrines, and provides the means of leading a holy life, thereby giving holy members to every age. The Catholic Church is Catholic or universal because destined to last for all time, it never fails to fulfill the divine commandment to teach all nations all the truths revealed by God. And the Catholic Church is apostolic, meaning that it was founded by Christ on the apostles, and according to his divine will, has always been governed by their lawful successors. We know that no other church but the Catholic Church is the true Church of Christ, because no other church has these four marks. It is one. It is holy. It is universal. And it is apostolic. Only the Catholic Church has all four of these marks. It alone is the church Christ founded. But we must convince men of this by love. According to the Gospel of St. John, he says, By this will all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now the attributes of the church. The chief attributes of the Catholic Church are authority, infallibility, and indefectibility. These are called attributes because they are qualities perfecting the nature of the Church. By the authority of the Catholic Church is meant that the Pope and the bishops, as the lawful successors of the Apostles, have power from Christ Himself to teach, to sanctify, and to govern the faithful in spiritual matters. Authority is the power to command others. All authority is from God, and He gives it to the Church in spiritual matters. To refuse to obey the authority of the Church is to refuse to obey Christ. He himself said to his disciples, He who hears you hears me, and he who rejects you rejects me. By the infallibility of the Catholic Church is meant that the Church, by the special assistance of the Holy Spirit, cannot err when it teaches or believes a doctrine of faith or morals. Infallibility does not mean that the Pope cannot commit a sin, but that in teaching a doctrine of faith or morals, he is prevented by the Holy Spirit from making a mistake. The Church teaches only truth. The Church teaches infallibility when it defines, through the Pope alone, as the teacher of all Christians, or through the Pope and the bishops, a doctrine of faith or morals to be held by all the faithful. By the defectibility of the Church is meant that the Catholic Church, as Christ founded it, will last until the end of time. Nations will rise and fall. False religions will come and go. But the Church will last forever. The Catholic Church is called the mystical body of Christ because its members are united by supernatural bonds with one another and with Christ, their head, thus resembling the members and head of the living human body. When the Father looks down from heaven at the Church, he sees Christ. The Church is Christ. It is his body of which he is the head, and we are the members. Mary is the mother of Christ in the flesh, but in the life of grace, she is his bride. Her divine life came from his, 
not his from hers. In order that a person be a member of the mystical body in the full sense, it is necessary that they be baptized, that they profess the Catholic faith, and that they neither separate themselves from the mystical body nor be excluded by lawful authority. A baptized person separates himself from full incorporation in the mystical body by open and deliberate heresy, apostasy, or schism. A baptized person separates themselves from full incorporation in the mystical body by heresy when they openly reject or doubt some doctrine proposed by the Catholic Church as a truth of divine Catholic faith, though still professing himself a Catholic. A baptized person separates himself from full incorporation in the mystical body by apostasy when he openly rejects the entire Christian faith. A baptized person separates himself from full incorporation in the mystical body by schism when he openly refuses obedience to the lawful authorities of the Church. As we close, Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is that all men should be saved and that none should perish, look upon the souls deceived by the guile of Satan, so that the hearts of those who have gone astray may put aside the perversiveness of heresy, and being truly repentant, may return to your unity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.